If you're looking for ways to make really creative illustrated stories for your students, stay tuned and I'll walk you through some really quick and easy tips and tricks to get it done quickly. Welcome to AI for Teachers. I'm Jen Twadell. I've been having a really great time playing with some generative AI apps and I think you will really enjoy the process. I have been using ChatGPT for a while to generate some fun and engaging stories for my students, but I really wanted to be able to either get them to generate some images to go with the story or generate them myself. I found a few challenges with trying to maintain the same character through the images, but I've come up with some tips and tricks that are really easy and straightforward to use so that you can easily make images for different settings and multiple characters. So today I'm gonna to be using ChatGPT to generate the stories, which is really quick and easy. Then I'm gonna be using Leonardo AI to help me generate images, but I'm also gonna show you how you can use the images that you generate and put them into Canva to help change them around and manipulate them. And I've just found that using Canva really lends itself to making multiple images with multiple characters and just having a bit more flexibility in the process of doing that. So let's get started with ChatGPT. Once you've logged into ChatGPT, it's really straightforward. You simply need to generate a prompt that tells the chatbot what type of story you want to generate. You can even include character names, character settings, and any language devices perhaps that you want to include. So today I said descriptive language and using the show don't tell method because that's something that we've been working on in class as well as including a Lexile level if you want to have it generated at a particular level for your students. Once you generate that story, you can alter it you can make changes. I went in and added another section because I wanted there to be a character that was a dragon. Obviously, I could have put that in the original prompt, but generating stories on ChatGPT is really quick and really easy. And I use the free version so you can really generate a number of stories quickly. It's the image part that's a lot of fun, but takes a little bit of tweaking. So we're gonna head into Leonardo AI and I'll show you a few tricks that will help you when you're generating your pictures for your story. Once you log into Leonardo.ai, you can choose to sign in with an Apple account or a Google account, etc. It's free to sign up and it works on a token system so you can use it for free and every day you get 150 tokens that you can use to generate your photos. So if you head into the front page, you'll notice that there are all different types of genres of images that you can choose. Some linked to fantasy, some linked to characters. The one that I really like using is the 3D animation page because it generates really good backgrounds as well as characters. Also, I find that this helps at least keep your picture in the same type of style without having to over prompt. Another great thing about this website is if you scroll down, you'll see lots of different types of images that have been created by other users. And if you scroll over top of it, it shows you what prompt they use to generate that image, which I have found really helpful when I've gone to generate images for myself. Once you've generated some images, there is a section called personal feed where it keeps track of all the pictures that you've generated as well as the prompts that you use to generate those images. As you can see here, I've been playing around with the setting of Candyland and trying to develop some different characters. So a few tips. The first tip is name your characters in your prompt. So give them a name and give some prompting to exactly what you want that character to look like. So in my prompt, I have two characters, Thomas and Billy, and I've given some prompts over their physical attributes. So the next trick that works well is using the AI, but telling it what image you want the next image to be based off of. So you simply scroll down and there's a 
spot where you can upload a previous image or you can choose one of the images in your feed and tell it that you want it to base the next photo on some similarities from the photo that you provide with it. So if you hit the little arrow, it will put it over into that section and with the dial, you're telling the AI how close to that image do you want this next image to be. So I left it quite low because I just want the characters to be the same, but I want the setting to be different. I take the prompt that I used to generate that image and I put it back in the top and I just alter it slightly. Now I found the most success if you want the expressions or something on the face to change, try and use that expression more than once in your prompt. Their facial expressions are scared. Billy's looking scared. Thomas has a scared look on his face. I found that to be more helpful instead of just trying to say the word one time. So once you have the image in there, you can alter your prompt slightly to how you want the next image to be generated and you hit generate image and it only takes a few seconds for the images to be created and you can choose how many options you want to be generated each time. Obviously, less photos take less tokens. I still found that using these names and using the image, I wasn't always getting the exact result I wanted. As you can see, the image that it generated for me, while it's beautiful and actually the characters look the same, it's kind of a different type of anime image. And I was hoping to keep that similar in this next photo. So I could play around with toggling the image from before and increasing that slightly, but I found an even better way to make sure that I could manipulate the images quickly and easily. And it's basically using a combination of this Leonardo AI with Canva. So previously I had generated this image here with my character Thomas standing in multiple positions with different facial expressions and I wanted to make an image with my other character Billy um, the exact same. So I used that same technique of putting that image over into the generating tool telling it I want an image similar and I went up to the prompt and I just described the character that I wanted. So I've said Billy who's of African descent with black hair and brown eyes, he loves adventures, make him in several positions with different facial expressions on a white background. I was only able to generate two examples, but luckily by using that um, other picture, it gave me two really good examples. And then I can easily download that image onto my computer and I can use it very easily in Canva and use all the different characters easily putting them on different backgrounds. Generating backgrounds is also very easy. I still used the um, 3D animation area to generate and I simply used the prompt of create a scene, either a Candyland scene or a mushroom forest or even you can create a scenery of pyramids. Really your options are endless and I just find that the backgrounds that it creates are, are so vivid and beautiful and really match um, the theme of the characters that I was generating. And then you download can download all of those um, backgrounds as well and then easily use them in Canva. If you don't already have a Canva account, I highly recommend it. It is free for teachers and you can actually use it in the classroom by inviting students to your page so that they can utilize the tools as well. So you're going to go into photo editor and it is set up as a series of different um, backgrounds that you can manipulate the images on. And as you can see, you're able to then have a lot more control over your backgrounds and your characters and it just keeps it more unified. So the great thing is, is that you can use the images from Leonardo AI, such as your background here that I created of the Candyland background. 
The tools are very easy to use, so you can make things bigger and smaller. All, it has some great AI tools, so once you select your photo, there's things like background remover and magic grab that you can use. And then you can that image that has all the characters and just select one of the characters and you can copy and paste them from that main page and then put it down onto your background. So once you have been able to use that magic grab, you just right click and copy and paste that little character and you can put it down onto the Candyland background. The great thing about Canva is, is it is also loaded with different graphics and photographs that you can use. So you can even use some of the backgrounds that they have. You don't have to use uh, backgrounds that you've generated from Leonardo, but you can see that you have a lot more control over what is going to be produced and the end result than constantly trying to reprompt um, in Leonardo AI. You can use little graphics like adding a dragon um, into your image and Canva has an endless amount of photos and graphics that you can use as well as backgrounds. So my recommendation obviously is that you have a play around if you're not getting the results that you want with Leonardo AI you can definitely use those images in Canva and you have a lot more control over what your end result is. And it's very easy to then create a storyboard that's gonna match any story that you're able to generate with ChatGPT. I hope you found this video useful. I certainly had a lot of fun generating the images and playing around with the image generating AI. So I think the main tips are trying to name your characters using the image to help AI prompt so it understands what type of image you're looking for. And then obviously using Canva because you have a lot of control over what your end result is and what you can create. This has been AI for Teachers and I'm Jen Twydell. Remember to balance your work and well-being.